All right, everybody, how are we doing today? I finished my tea. I got my caffeine for today. Woo! Okay, flags of inconvenience. New titans around Iranian shipping. Uh, London, Dubai, Panama City. Some are on its journey from the from the waters of Iran around Africa's uh, southern tip into the Mediterranean. The Grace One oil tanker lost the flag under which it sailed and ceased to be registered to Panama, Iran. <coughs> oh, God! Oh! Later claimed it as its own. Yep, the, 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 uh, a, a ship lost its flag and then Iran grabbed it. Yep, so that's where we are now. This is going to be spectacular. The ship carrying two million barrels of Iranian crude was seized by British Royal Marines off Gibraltar, raising tensions in the Gulf where Iran detained a UK flagship in retaliation. Grace One remains impounded, not because of its flag, but because it was suspected of, of taking oil to Syria in breach of EU sanctions and allegations that Iran denies. Yet Panama's move on May 29 to strike it from its register mid-voyage was part of a global squeeze on Iranian shipping. Nations that register vessels under so-called flags of convenience, allowing them to, to uh, sail legally, have delisted dozens of tankers owned by Iran in recent months, tightening the economic noose around it. In the biggest cull, Panama, the world's most important flag state, removed 59 tankers linked to Iran and Syria earlier this year, a decision welcomed by the United States which wants to cut off Tehran's vital oil exports. Panama and some other key flag states are looking more closely at thousands of ships on their registers to ensure they comply with U.S. sanctions that were reimposed against Iran last year and tightened further since. A Reuters analysis of shipping registry data shows that Panama has delisted around 55 Iranian tankers since January. Togo has delisted at least three and Syria, Lyon, one. That represents the majority of its operational fleet of tankers, the lifeblood of the oil-dominated uh, economy, although Iran may have re-registered some ships under new flag states. They'll find a way out of this, I'm sure. They'll flag signal some other way to get their ships to safety. But to be honest with you, this uh, attack on their economy, this economic warfare, yeah, someone in their country is going to end up starving to death, and it's going to be Trump's fault. Absolutely. Even if it ends up working and he gets a better deal like he plans, people are going to die because of it. And it'll be his fault. So don't ever, ever forget this. Not ever. Just like we'll never ever forget what what Obama did with his drone strikes. Oh, and George W. Bush. Don't forget him. When a vessel loses its flag, it typically loses insurance cover. If it does not immediately find an alternative, it may be barred from calling it ports. Flags of convenience also provide a, a, a layer of cover for a vessel's ultimate owner. International registers uh, charge fees to ship owners to use their flags and offer tax incentives to attract business. Iran still said it still had plenty of options. There are so many shipping companies that we can use in spite of U.S. pressure. Many friendly countries are happy to help us and have offered to help us regarding this issue, said an Iranian shipping official when asked about tankers being delisted. Some nations have expressed caution, however, the world's third biggest shipping registry, Liberia, said its database automatically identified vessels with Iranian ownership or other connections to the country. Thus, any potential request to register a vessel with Iranian connection triggers an alert and gets carefully vetted by the registry's compliance and management personnel, the, the registry said. Liberia said it was working closely with U.S. authorities to prevent what it called malign activity in maritime trade. Iranian flag. In many cases, Iran has relisted ships under its own flag, complicating efforts to move oil and other goods to and from dwindling numbers of countries willing to do business with it. Some shipping specialists said the Iranian flag was problematic because individuals working for the registry in Iran could be designated under U.S. sanctions. And so, present a risk for anyone dealing with vessels listed by them. I'm sorry, when you put flag and problematic in the same sentence, I think of something else. Most insurance companies or banks will not be able to deal with the Iranian flag as it is, in effect, dealing with the Iranian state, said Mike Salthouse, deputy global director with ship insurer of North, in the north of England, P&I. 
Customs officials may also sit up and take notice. One of the problems with an Iranian flagged ship is that there is a 50% chance that a customs officer will undertake a search, which means the cargo will be delayed, said a UN sanctions investigator to decline to be named. These all add to the costs. A former U.S. diplomat said Washington was often in contact with Panama and other flag states to keep vessel registries clean. We are continuing to disrupt the, uh, the code's force illicit shipments of oil, which benefit terrorist groups like Hezbollah as well as the Assad regime in Syria, said a spokesman at the U.S. State Department. COD's forces refer to an elite unit of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps that is in charge of the Guard's overseas operations, and Hezbollah is an Iran-backed, heavily armed Shiite Muslim group that forms part of Lebanon's coalition government. Nearly 80 tankers involved in sanctionable activity have been denied the flags they need to sail, the spokesman said. I see they're starting to complicate things, but then again, so did Iran by uh, doing this sort of false flagging. They partly brought it on themselves, and they've ruined it for everybody. Uh, false flags. Deflagging Iranian ships is just one way the international community can squeeze Iran. U.S. sanctions on oil exports aim to reduce Iran's sales to zero. Iran has vowed to continue exporting. In the first three weeks of June, Iran exported around 300,000 barrels per day, BPD, a fraction of the 2.5 million BPD that Iran shipped before President Donald Trump's exit in May last year from the 2015 nuclear deal with major powers. Egypt could also complicate life for Tehran if it denies passage to tankers heading to the Mediterranean through the, so the Suez Canal. The alternative, the alternative route around Africa taken by Grace One before its seizure is far longer. Refinitive shipping data showed the Massal, an Iranian flagged oil tanker, anchored in the uh, Suez Canal's waiting zone on July 6. It stayed there until July 12th, but it began to sail south. It exited the Red Sea on July 17th and docked at Larak Island, Iran, on July 23rd. Two Egyptian intelligence sources told Reuters that the tanker was halted in the Red Sea in July by authorities without anyone knowing the reason. A second senior Iranian government official involved in shipping declined to comment when asked about the Massal. The Suez Canal Authority spokesman said Egypt did not bar vessels from crossing the canal except in times of war. In accordance with the uh, Constantinople Convention, he declined to comment further. Truth be known, Egypt is, uh, is Egypt in name only. The original co nation called Egypt, or Ancient Egypt, uh, died a long time ago. The current state is more of a namesake. Uh, th that's just an aside. But all in all, I'd say, you know, like I said, Iran has complicated things by, by the, uh, the misflagging of ships and false flagging in order to get their ships out. They've complicated things heavily. And now other, other countries might face uh, a portion of the sanctions placed against them. Well, I guess, uh, you know what they, say is, what they say is true. Misery loves company. So good job, uh, Tehran. Way to go to be a capital of the world, right? Uh, <clears throat> Britain tightened the screw when it seized the Grace 1 supertanker on July 4th, accusing it of violating sanctions against Syria. Two Iranian flagged ships have been stranded for weeks at Brazilian ports due to a lack of fuel, which state-run oil firms uh, Petrobras refused to sell them due to U.S. sanctions. Two more Iranian ships in Brazil could also be left without enough fuel to sail home. A recent incident of Pakistan's coast last month points to the lengths Iran has gone to in order, in order to keep trading. The Iranian cargo carrier Hayan left from the Iranian port of Bandar Abbas on June 3rd, and set sail for Karachi on Pakistan's court, according to ship tracking data from maritime risk analyst Windward. On June 7th, it changed its name to uh, Mary 2, and its flag to that of Samoa. The data showed as it made its way toward Karachi port. Six days later, the vessel conducted a ship-to-ship -ship transfer of its unknown cargo, cargo further up Pakistan's coast. The ship then returned home, changed its flag back to Iran, and its name back to Hayan. Uh, Imran UI Hack, spokesman of for the of the for the Pakistan Maritime Security Agency, said they had no information when asked about the Iranian ship's activity. I'm wondering when they change the ship's flag and identity, do they do it like the same way you see like in a movie, or like the cool spy car that suddenly flips its license plate into another license plate, or did they like actively get down there and scrub the name off, or do they not put the name on the side? So they they made the ship appear Samoan. 
and called it Mary 2. Completely disguising the ship so people wouldn't realize it's Iranian. And as I said, uh, they're making things worse for everyone else. And God only knows what Samoa would have, would have to say about this situation. I can't imagine they'd be too happy if they, re if they realized what was going on. Trust me, you don't want to see an angry Polynesian. I've seen it. It's, uh, it's, it's a truly frightening sight. You, you don't want to see it. Believe me. Iran has frequently used ship-to-ship -ship transfers to move oil and oil producers into U.S. sanctions where were reimposed. Shipping data also show that a separate Indian-owned cargo ship, the Yah Hedar, has been sailing around the Gulf and reporting its flag as that of Samoa. Samoa denies allowing Iran to register any ship under its flag. The said vessels, Hayan or Yah Hadar, are not and have not been listed, nor registered on the Samoa's registry of, of vessels, said Ant Anastasia Amoa St St Stowers of the Maritime Department at Samoa's Ministry of Works, Transport, and Infrastructure. Given there are currently no Iranian ships listed on Samoa's registry, there is no action to delist a vessel. Additionally, there has never been any Iranian ships listed on Samoa's vessel registry, previously and at present. Amoa uh, Stowers said Samoa was a closed registry, meaning that any foreign vessels flying in its flag was doing so illegally. The second senior Iranian government official involved in shipping declined to comment when asked about the, the two vessels. A spokeswoman with the International Maritime Organization said the UN shipping agency had received information from Samoa, which has been circulated to member states. Yeah. So obviously Trump's maximum pressure campaign isn't working too well, since apparently Iran's trying to find ways around it and still sell their oil. Will they cave? Trump is really going to have to have a cross a line if he wants them to give in to his maximum pressure. A and a, a line that I say again would result in starving children. So next time you see starving children in Iran, just imagine Trump's face kind of floating over the image, smiling. Uh, that, uh, that's an image for your nightmares there, folks. It's gotta happen. It's within this country's history. I agree, America is the greatest country in the world. If you're a natural born citizen or legal immigrant. But if you're one of our enemies overseas, you're basically screwed. Anyway, 